Today, we're going to be going over the if node. I have a lead generation agency and I'm automating as much of it as I can along the way. I'm going to be giving you simple examples so that you can learn how to automate yourself. Initially, we're going to be focusing on the core nodes to give you 80% of everything that you need to know to make useful workflows. There's thousands of videos on YouTube showing you how to make useless data movers, but we're going to be using my agency's real workflows to show you how to automate. Stick around. Here's one of my workflows and we'll be going over the if node right here. A little bit of context, what we do is cold email. So we're basically emailing thousands of decision makers at companies and we reply using AI. We get large lead lists, data sheets, and we basically email. We use SmartLead. So SmartLead is an email sequencer. It will send out all of our emails for us and basically sends a webhook when we get a reply. I'm using that webhook to receive the data generate a reply and send it back off. We'll get into the if node here. In this situation, we have two conditions that need to be met, which both of them need to be met in order for it to be true. Because it has an and, it's saying if this one is true and this one is true, then they are both true. But if this one was true and this one was false, then they would go to the false branch. In the if node, there's six different categories that you can use. And within those categories, there's also subcategories, but the main categories are string, number, date and time, Boolean array, and object. So in this situation, we are using string and string just basically means text. So as you can see, we have it set for is not equal to yes, which is true, but we can flip that around we can go to is equal to execute. Then we route all of our data to the false branch because it is false. We have other options in string. We could say exists. In this situation, it's just looking to see if there's any value. So if it exists, so we will execute. And as you can see, no, is something that exists. So it goes to the true branch. Next, we'll go over number. So we're gonna have to change this out. So we will pick engagement score. You can see in this situation, 85 is a number. We can pick we can still use things like is empty, is not empty, exists, does not exist for the majority of these. But now in this situation, we have the option to go is greater than. So the actual value is 85, as you can see, because it's an expression. And we could set it to is greater than 90. Is 85 greater than 90? And that's gonna be no, false. And obviously, if we went is less than, then it would go true. I think you get the idea. You can basically set it up within any of these that you want. Next, we will go over date and time. So we will drag in a date here. In this situation, it's showing us our last engagement for the lead. The actual value is October 3rd. Let's just select the second. So if October 3rd is after the second, then we're gonna go true. Next we have Boolean. Boolean is basically just a value that is true or false, one or zero. We can go to is true, and then we'll bring in something else. So this one is qualified. The value is true, so execute step, it's going to stay true. Next we have array. An array is one of these items with the square brackets, not the squiggly brackets. The squiggly brackets are objects. So we'll just drag in this one right here. So as you can see, an array has multiple different strings of text within it. So inter interested, enterprise, follow-up needed. So is true is not really going to be relevant there. Uh, for example, we could go contains. So if it contains interested, it's going to be true because it does contain interested or we can just change that slightly. Typo. 
then it's false. Everything gets routed over there. There's other options. We can go length is not equal to. In this situation, it's looking for the number of items is what the length is. So let's say two because we have three. So length is not equal to two. That's true. Two is not equal to three. Hopefully I'm breaking this down for you as simply as possible. A lot of times people just use complicated terminology and confuse people, but I'm literally trying to make this as simple as possible. The final one that we have are objects. So we will go grab an object. Like I said, squiggly brackets are the objects. So we will grab this one. Objects have multiple key value pairs. So you can see that we have industry is a key, company size is a key, estimated revenue is a key. And then we have our values, SAS, 500 to 200, 5 million. For objects, you can set is empty, is not empty, exists, does not exist. So we will go is empty, obviously not true. It's going to go false. If you're finding this useful so far, you can also go to my brand new school that I just dropped. Be the first one in. I'll link it down below. We're going to be going over some more in-depth topics within there. The next thing I want to mention is this convert types where required. And this is basically just saying that it will convert between these types where it can. We'll drop one in here. So we'll put in the lead ID, which is a number, and we'll have it set up for string and is equal to. And because this is turned on, it will actually convert it from a string or text to a number. But you see, if I turn this off, it's going to error. To me, in most situations, I would just always turn this on. In my next video, we're going to be going over the code node. Check that one out if you're interested.